What's up everybody, it's Javi here, and this is the very first video of a new video series where we're gonna be building a website with React and Next.js. You've asked me about code, about prototyping, and about the future of the web, and what that means for product design and designers. In this series, I'm gonna take you all the way, and in future videos, we're gonna to start to reason from that backwards. By the end of this series, you'll have built a very simple blog app that looks like this. At a glance, you can tell it's very simple, but under the hood, this example is based off the official Next.js Learn documentation. So by the time that we're done here, we will have made sure to cover all of the essentials that you need to get started with Next.js. To get the best out of this series, it would be great if you already have some familiarity with JavaScript and React. If not, don't worry, I'm going to try to be as descriptive as possible, and I will also drop some learning resources in the video description below. In this video, we'll cover what is Next.js and why you should care about it. We're gonna set up your dev environment to make sure that you can run a Next.js app locally in your computer. We're gonna create our very first Next.js app and run it locally in a dev server. We're gonna create a new page using Next.js's integrated file system routing. And we're gonna learn how to navigate between those pages using Next.js's built-in link component. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles, and practices to help you build digital products and bring your ideas to life. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, don't forget to hit subscribe. Now, without further ado, what is Next.js and why should you care? Next.js is simply a React framework, and what it does is that it takes care of the most important details that you need to consider when building a complete modern web application. When you're building an app, you want to make sure that you can provide your users with the best and most modern user experience possible. And that means being as lightweight and fast as you can. And when it comes to maintaining the app over time, you also want to make sure that you have a great developer experience so that you and your team can write code at scale to facilitate new features and enhancements when needed. That is where Next.js jumps in and it's already used by tens of thousands of websites and applications, including some of the world's largest. The first thing you need is Node.js, which is essentially a framework that allows you to run JavaScript on a server. Next.js requires you to have version 10.13 or later. To check what kind of version you may have already, all you have to do is go to your terminal. So I'm just gonna open terminal here on my Mac and you should see something like this. And to check the version, you can do something as simple as node-v. And as you can see here, I am running in this case 12.16.2. So that meets the requirements for this tutorial. If you don't have Node.js installed, I'll provide a link in the description below so you can set that up. If you're on Windows, the official documentation from Next.js also recommends that you install Git. So for Windows users, you should know that. The second thing you need is a code editor. And in my case, I am using Visual Studio Code. So you can find that here in the Visual Studio Code official website. This is simply an app that allows you to edit code. And this one in particular is built by Microsoft. Once you've installed Node.js and a code editor of your choice, we can come back here to our terminal and within terminal, you can use both the list command, which you can use by typing ls, and you can also use the cd command, which stands for change directory, and then put the name of the directory that you want. In this case, I'm going to choose desktop to determine the place where you want to be in order to set up the files that we're about to download for our Next.js app. Now that we're here, we can come over to the official Next.js documentation for learning. And I'm just gonna simply scroll down to this page right here called Setup. And I'm going to copy this, which should run if we've installed everything that we covered earlier in the video. So what this essentially is going to do, if we can simply have a look at this snippet, is it's going to create a Next app. And you can see that by this portion right here. It's calling it Next.js blog. So that's gonna be the name of our directory of the app. And then it's simply using NPM to also set up at the same time some starter files that we're gonna need for this particular 
example. So now that that's in place, I can simply press enter and you should see that if there are no problems, it's going to start loading and installing the packages and this should take almost no time, perfect. And as you can see, you should get a success message here that a Next.js blog has been installed in our desktop. We can verify that by coming over here to our finder. In my case, I have two folders because I have one for the final result, but as you can see here, this one was just installed right now. It's a Next.js blog, Next.js app with everything contained in order for us to run this application. Now we can go back to our terminal and if we want to move over to that directory we just created, all we have to do is use the cd command that we just learned earlier and put the name of the directory we just created, in this case, nextjs-blog. So now we are inside our blog directory. And if you want to run this locally in a development server on your computer, all you have to do is npm run dev. And what npm run dev does is that it's taking our Next.js app and it's going to put it or stage it inside a development server that only we can access for the purpose of editing the code and seeing a live result as if it was in the browser. So in order to see that, you can copy this URL here that Terminal will give you. It's in this case, localhost 3000. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come over to my browser, open a new tab, copy and paste. And if everything worked well, there you go. You should have your Next.js application live in your development server. Now, you'll be able to see this only for as long as your terminal session is active. If you decide to kill the terminal session, then this local host will no longer be existent and you won't be able to access the contents. So it's important that you keep the terminal session active. Congratulations. As simple as that, you've just created your first Next.js application. Let's move forward. The next logical step would be to figure out how we can actually edit our application. And you can do this very easily by coming here to your finder and just simply dragging the folder over to VS Code. And I have that nicely set up here in my doc. So if I do this, it's essentially going to open that directory on a VS Code workspace. So I can remove this and if I am looking here through the files, these are gonna be the very exact files that we would find if we would go to our finder here and navigated the internal contents of that folder. The difference is that VS Code gives you an environment where you can actually manipulate those. So that is pretty cool. If you didn't have this in your doc, all you have to do is come over to VS Code and do open, and in this case, you would be able to then come to your desktop and just select the Next.js blog and it will open in the same way. Now, what you are seeing here when you come to the local host 3000 for the first time is your root page, or in simpler terms, your home page, right? So the first page that a user is going to access when entering this application. You can find this page by coming over here to VS Code, coming into the pages directory, and then you will find that there is a file called index.js. So if I click on that, VS Code will automatically show me the code on the right side, and I can simply take any of this and edit it however I want. For example, I am here inside the main content. There is a H1, which in this case stands for this piece right here, right? So if I come over to the code, I can simply change this from let's say welcome to, to learning, let's say. And you will see that typically there is a dot here if you don't have auto save enabled. All I have to do to save this is command S. And if I come back to my local host, boom, the title just automatically changed to learning Next.js. So what you just saw is that with Next.js, you can make any changes to your files and then see instant results in your development server. That is thanks to a feature that is built in in Next.js and it's called Fast Refresh, which makes for an awesome developer experience. Now, let's say that we wanted to create a new page. How would we go about that? 
In Next.js, a page is simply a React component that lives inside the pages directory. So if you'll recall, what I mentioned earlier is that this root page here is simply a file called index.js that lives inside this pages folder. And this is essentially a React component, but in the way that we are seeing it in Next.js, it's a page. It's like if you were building a traditional website and you were using HTML, but in this case, we are using JSX and React components. To follow the tutorial, what we want to do in this case is create a subdirectory inside pages that we're gonna call post that is going to host all of the posts that we want to feature in our blog. And in order to do that, all you have to do is come over here to your pages. You can right click and click on new folder and we can call this posts. And now inside posts, you can open this up and we're gonna create a new file called first post with a dash in between and do dot JS. So there we go. Now we have first post.js. And just to be sure we can see something and test how we could access it from our development server, all we have to do is just follow the tutorial here in this case. And I think I can come over here already to navigate between pages. And I believe the code snippet for this should be right here. So I'm gonna copy this. This is simply a function that is going to return a header and I'm going to command save. And now the way that I would access that on the development server is come over here to my local host and all I have to do is do posts and then slash and first post. And now you would see that we have our first post header one or heading one, sorry, just like we had it here in our function. So that's basically it for creating pages. And now that we have this page created, what we want to do is have a way to easily navigate between the two, right? So that's what we're going to do next. Typically what you would traditionally do is set up an A tag with a reference between the two pages to create some links. In Next.js, you can use a native component that comes with the framework called link. And we're going to be using this component to wrap the A tag where our links are going to live. As you will see, what this is going to basically allow us is something called client side navigation. And what that basically means is that the page transition is going to happen not through the browser, but actually it's happening through JavaScript. And what that's going to result in is a much faster transition between those pages. So to set that up, all we have to do is come back here to our tutorial and there's just simply a couple of code snippets that we have to implement. So let's just continue through this documentation. And the first thing we have to do is go to our index.js, which is our homepage. And we have to make sure that we are importing the link component from Next.js in order to make sure that we can reference it in the code. So I'm gonna come here to my Next.js file and imports happen all the way at the top. So I can come here, we are already importing a head component. Now I'm gonna press enter and do command V for import link. I'm gonna save this. And now we have to come here to our H1 that we just edited earlier. And that one is right over here, learning Next.js. And we are going to replace it for this one, which is essentially very similar. The main difference that's happening here, as you can see, is that there is a link component that's referenced here that, as mentioned earlier, is going to essentially serve as a wrapper for our A tag. And that's what's going to facilitate us being able to use that component. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste it here, and then I'm just gonna make sure that I sort out the formatting fuzziness here. And now that that's set up, we have everything we need in our index file. So if we actually were to come back to our index file here and I click on this page, and now what we wanna do is have the link in the other page as well, right? So 
If we follow the documentation, we will find a code snippet for that as well. So we can copy this bit right here. I'm gonna come over to my first post.js. I'm going to remove all this and paste this one. And just to explain you what's going on here, it's a very similar scenario. What we have to do here is import link from next link. And then we have a function that is essentially setting up our page. And inside that function is a return that is going to give us an H1 that says first post. So just like we had it before. And what we have right below it is an H2 tag that is back to home. And this is also a link that is wrapped with the link component. And the reference is the home page using this slash right here. So now if I hit save to our first post.js, I come back here and with fast refresh, this should have happened instantly. I can click on this page. It will take me to post first post. And if we click on back to home, it's gonna take us back to our index.js file. So what exactly is the link component doing to make this loading between pages so fast? There are two things that are happening under the hood thanks to Next.js. The first one is automatic code splitting, which means that every time we are loading a page, it's only processing the code that is necessary for that page and nothing else. So the load time is just naturally faster because there's less to load. The second and most interesting bit is something called prefetching, which means that whenever you have a link component in the browser, what Next.js is doing in the background is recognizing that component and loading all the data in the background before you even decide to navigate so that by the time you click on that link and you want to go to that page, everything is loaded automatically and you don't have to load that again at the time when you want to navigate. And that is all for today. So in a summary, what we did in this video is we set up a dev environment to help you run a Next.js application we created our very first Next.js application and we ran it locally within a development server. We created a new page using Next.js's integrated file system routing and we learned how to navigate between those pages with near instant page transition thanks to the Next.js link component. In the next video of this series, we're gonna learn how to add static files like images to our Next.js app. We're gonna customize the metadata of our pages and we are gonna get into some styling, both globally for our entire application and for specific React components. I hope this video was useful to help you get started with Next.js. If it was, don't forget to give this video a like and let me know below if you have any questions or comments. I hope you're all safe and well, and I will catch you in the next one.